more questions. Yeah, more questions. Now, now to a topic that's really close to my heart. Um, can we be recycled? Yes. Okay. Would you like <laughs> to elaborate on that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, of course it can be recycled. Mm. But is it the first thing we should be doing? I, I mean, I think we've had this discussion um, mm. in brief before. And is it the first thing we should be doing? No, because recycling takes energy. And you lose a lot of the, of the material benefits of wood yeah. because recycling inevitably means, I think, breaking it down into yeah. smaller units, maybe making composite structures. Certainly that should be part of the strategy, but <clears throat> ultimately I think we need to be thinking a lot much more cleverly about the buildings that we make and maybe we can have a structure that internally we can reconfigure that structure for multi-purpose uses. So yes, it can be recycled, but is it the thing we should be doing first of all at the end of life? No, I don't think it is. I don't know if you have a yeah. view on that. Yeah. I'm sure you do. Yeah, no, I, You've I, been I, working on this for a long yeah, time. Yeah, and so. I, I, I totally agree. I mean, it, it actually comes, we need to look at this in a kind of systemic way and we need to think, how, first of all, how do, how do we prevent materials being used in the first place? We reduce. Oh, absolutely. And, 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 and that comes by extending building yeah. life. And, and also then, as you say, making them more adaptable. Yeah. And if we, can, if we can also think about how we can make the, uh, the, the buildings more deconstructible, then we can actually recover yeah. material that is of better quality that could then be used again in other applications so we have a reuse situation rather than recycling. So I think recycling should actually not really enter the vocabulary in the same way as it does now. I think we yeah. should be thinking, talking more about prevention, re yeah. re reducing and reusing yep. rather than the recycling. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, ultimately, I mean, there will always be losses when we start to move mm. things around so there will be stuff that what can we do with this mm. and, and you know, of course there's a place there for for uh composite products uh maybe even as a as a kind of precursor for chemicals or energy products so mm. all sorts of things Bi biochar i think is is, yeah. is, is, yeah, biochar is very interesting it's very interesting actually yeah, yeah. so there are mm. there are things we can we can do certainly mm. okay maybe i think we've covered that one so um um, okay, maybe this is, a, this is a, another question in the same vein, but may, maybe uh, maybe it's, it, it could be rephrased slightly. But anyway, I'll ask the question as it stands. So what are the greatest um, hindrances to using wood, uh, recycled wood as a material? I think, well, I, it's the same problem with most recycling uh, of most materials is you get the heterogeneity of the of the mix of the, all the different products get lumped together and then Generally speaking, you have to separate them out, but I think the biggest barrier to answer the question directly is, is legacy wood preservatives. Yeah. I think that can be quite a serious issue, like the, the copper chrome arsenics, which at least are visible because yeah. uh, they're green, but then you've got some of the older ones, some of the tin-based preservatives, yeah. these sorts of things, which, yeah. I mean, you will need some sort of sensor to yeah. somehow, and maybe you have a, a, you know, some sort of line that runs along and a sensor will be... Yep. Like detecting these things yep. and kicking them off, I think that's the biggest barrier. And yep. that's really why wood modifications become yep. quite a hot topic. Yep. It's not actually a huge volume of wood, but yep. uh, I think the later preservatives don't have the same issues. But of mm -hmm. course, if it's a preservative for exterior use, then you're now limiting future uses to exterior use. And mm -hmm. there's this high idea of how do you keep these things segregated. So mm -hmm. similar, obviously similar problems you have with polymers, these sorts of things. Yep. So. Yeah. Do you agree, or do you have other? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I, I think it's also kind of kind of a, a, a geographical issue because I mean, here here uh, preservatives are not so widely used as they are in other locations. Yeah, of course, obviously so the it's, UK. It's not where it's yes, not not quite rains so a, a lot there. I don't yeah, yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. That's why you left. So, so there are there are <laughs> slightly different issues at at hand. Of, yeah. of course, there there certainly is preservative treated wood, which which is just treated as a kind of a uh, as a waste, and that, and that we can't really think about recycling yeah. that. I mean, the other things that come to spring to mind are, of course, that. that when when you're recycling or when you when you're uh, collecting and reprocessing wood, you're you're usually destroying some of the structure of the wood yeah. in some way or another, and yeah. also during the use phase, yeah. we don't actually know too much about what actually happens to wood um, when it's being used, particularly if it's under load right. uh, over over time. Yeah. You mentioned about the heterogeneity. I think that's a big issue. If you think about how do we we take different maybe different species, certainly different. Um, uh, different times of growth, all yeah. these, it does it does create more yeah. uh, heterogeneity. And then how do we deal with these kind I, of I smaller mean, are, are you thinking more about re... You're not talking about reuse, you're talking about recycling. I'm mean, talking about recycling now, right. yeah, a little, little bit, yeah. And I think that there are kind of issues to, to handle. Yeah. I mean, I, I, but if you're just going to smash everything up, then the heterogeneity is something that doesn't matter because you've got a mix and it will have a property because it's a, yeah, like a and statistical and, mix. And that, that's, of course, happening now with particle board and, yeah. and stuff like that. But, uh, but I mean, if we're thinking about recycling into into 
into more solid wood forms yeah. like glue laminated types of product, which, which okay. is still a, it's still a viable process. But we still have this issue of, of kind of smaller dimensions, potential contamination. Yeah. I think the, the I mean, issue... There are, there are economic implications with these things, aren't there? It, it, and I'm thinking it, about things like nails, fasteners, uh, fixing, absolute, paint. Yeah, All absolutely. these can be issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, it, to, how to economically remove those or yeah. to separate the clean intact wood from that yeah. and what do you actually what's the yield right it's it's going to be very small so yeah, it's, i'm it's, glad it's you're working on this it sounds quite complicated so. it's 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 uh, challenging should we yes. say <laughs> should we say at the least yeah. anyway um okay maybe that's i think that covers yeah that i thought one. it might have been the last question actually but no i'm not. afraid not there's uh, one more um Okay, again, this, this maybe we, 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 I think we've kind of a little touched on, on, on the issue of recycling. I think we've maybe come from a similar viewpoint about recycling right. as such. But, but okay. Uh, You're making it, me nervous now. <laughs> Get on with the question. <laughs> Building up to I it. might not me. know anything about this. <laughs> okay, what kind of recycled wood products would you like to see in the market? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny question. <laughs> What would I like to see from recycled wood? I can't really answer that. I mean, the sort of thing I would like to see is a proper cascading system yes. where once we've used the solid wood to its maximum potential, like through repurposing, and then maybe we cascade down to a particle product, ultimately we could make some sort of cellulose fibre insulation out of that. But it doesn't always make sense because every time you recycle, you're going to use energy. Yeah. And of course, there's energy in wood that you could recover. <clears throat> and at some point, I know we've worked on this together, haven't we? You, yeah. It's the energy balance question of, well, are we actually going to use more energy through all these recycling, these cascading steps? Or can we recover that and replace the use of, of gas? I mean, that's very topical at the moment. Yeah. Can we have biomass fueled plant on some of these wood products? Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know if you have a... What's your favourite recycled wood product? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I think I, I, I fully agree with you. I think the, it's the cascading approach we need to take. And I think we need to be very, very clear on the fact that we need, we need to think about the, 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 the costs of recycling. I mean, in terms of the, the uh, energetics. Energy uh, costs and, are really and, and, important. And that, that becomes super I mean, important. The fact is you can recover energy from wood yeah. and you yeah. need to put that in the equation. You yeah. can't do that with concrete. No. Still, you don't recover no. energy from the no. materials. No. But I mean, if, if I was to think about kind of what kind of wood products would I want to see, there, I mean, currently particle board is the the one I think large scale commercial uh, use of, of uh, recovered wood. In the, the UK, in, we certainly yeah, I think else, else, yeah, elsewhere as well. Um, but I think if we could take a step up uh, in the in the cascading uh, hierarchy, we could we could then recover more solid wood and then yeah. reprocess that into in, into kind of glued, laminated, or even even uh, mechanically connected um, types of product that could replace, mm. for example, something like uh, CLT or glue yeah. lamp in, in those kind of composed structures. I think then that gives a little bit more flexibility because you can still recover that uh, and process that into particle board or yeah. recover the energy. Then, so then it's, you're talking about design for repurposing at the very early stages, which yes. is yeah. hardly I, I don't ever done, is it? When it's, people it's, design no, buildings, no, they don't I think, think about I think, how we're going to repurpose this No, no, I think, I, think, I, think, I think even now you could actually uh, recover some of the materials from, uh, particularly from kind of dem building demolitions, and yeah. you could recover that element and you, yeah. could, you could then utilise that. My dad that. used to do that. He'd take yeah. stuff out of skips and to pull the nails out. Yeah, I, I still do it. <laughs> <laughs> I still, yeah, I try to recycle as much in the house as possible. Well, you should. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You used to keep all the nails as well and straighten them out. That's yeah. going a bit far. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's my dad. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what uh, Joshua Slocum did when he was sailing around the world. Before he before he sailed around the world in his the boat he built, right. he, he was wrecked. He was a, a sea captain. He, right. he was wrecked on, on, in South South America. And they right. they actually they used the, the wreck. They, they they pulled out all the nails. They straightened them and they used all the wood. Then they built another. I forget. Liberty Liber Liber It was the name of the, the name of the the, the sailing boat when they was built. This? About 1850, something like well, that. You remember it, do you? No, I don't remember it, but I've, I've read about it, yeah. Joshua Slocum, the first person to sail single handed around the world. I didn't know that. Okay, there you go. So maybe a little bit extra information. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah.